astronomers discover something that could change the future of humanity. Studying Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our sun, they detect a planet orbiting around it. What's more, the planet seems Earth-like. They name it Proxima Centauri b. Proxima Centauri b is about the mass of Earth. It looks like it's in the habitable zone of its star. I mean, how amazing is that? It's called Proxima because it's so close. So close that NASA may already be capable of getting us there. Hard as it may be to believe, the technology for reaching Proxima Centauri b has actually existed since the 1950s. It's called a Project Orion spaceship. Basically, it's a large pogo stick that moves through space by exploding nuclear bombs behind it. The dream of exploration is burning within us. So there are people who will find a way to get to Proxima Centauri b. Project Orion could deliver thousands of intrepid human pioneers to the brave new world of Proxima b by the end of the century. But a 2017 NASA report reveals that when the colonists reach the surface of their new home, it will be the greatest survival challenge mankind has ever faced. So one of the ways Proxima Centauri b is different from Earth is that being so close to its host star, uh, it's most likely tidally locked. That means that its rotational period matches its orbital period. It's like the moon going around the Earth. One side of the moon always faces the Earth. You don't see the other side unless you get in a rocket and go into the back and take a look. The powerful gravitational tug of the nearby star means the same face of Proxima b always faces the light. The back of the planet is shrouded in eternal night. But the tidal locking of Proxima b also shields this dark side from the star's devastating cosmic rays. If you're a human colonist, you'll need shielding from the very damaging high energy flares that, that are coming from the star. Sheltered from the star's radiation, the colonists should prosper. The problem is, the night side of the sun is also shielded from the sun's heat. Models show that the night side is well below the freezing point of water, permanently frozen, covered in an ice sheet. So if you're on the day side of the planet, you would probably die from your radiation. If you're on the night side, you would probably die from extreme cold. But NASA reckons there is a part of the planet where the colonists could survive. The NASA study looks at how Earth-like and habitable Proxima b might be. And it's not good news. So Proxima Centauri b may be a habitable planet, but it's also probably a dangerous place to live, at least for us. The greatest risk to the colonists come from their new sun. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf, and that makes it dangerous. Because Proxima Centauri is much smaller and much cooler than the sun, the planet around it actually needs to be a lot closer to the star in order to be in the habitable zone. It's about 20 times closer to its host star than Earth is to the sun. But it also means that that planet gets lashed by up to 2,000 times more solar winds and cosmic rays and ultraviolet rays than our own sun uh, does for Earth. When the colonists stride out onto the surface of their new home planet, the sun in the sky appears large, dark, and red. A glorious sight, but it means the planet is under threat from giant solar flares. From this scorching sun, humans would have to find shelter. Once the colonists get to Proxima b, they need to get out of the way of that radiation, and the best place to avoid that is underground. Perhaps we'll be able to establish cities that are beneath the surface. The colonists must build a new kind of largely subterranean civilization. On Earth, our brains and our bodies have been shaped by the environment we contend with. The landforms, the oceans, the chemical makeup of the atmosphere. Human colonists could reach Proxima b by the end of the century. To survive the intense radiation on the surface, they would have to settle underground. Under those harsh conditions, scientists believe the colonists might not stay human for long. 
So one of the things that Darwin assumed was true about evolution is that it has to happen slowly. And now we know that that's not true. If you had a separate colonist group that uh, travels away and leaves humanity, the rest of humanity behind, they would certainly begin to evolve differently from those who were left on planet Earth. Here on Earth, we know that populations can evolve even in just a matter of a few generations. Any changes that happen, for example, from mutations caused by all of the radiation exposure, will make them different in a much faster rate than what we'd have here on Earth. The planet's higher mass, 1.3 times that of the Earth, would have the most immediate effect. What we might see is that people become adapted to a higher gravity environment, for example, by having stronger bones and stronger muscles. The colonists' subterranean existence may have an even more dramatic effect on their evolution. Away from the light, most likely they're going to be very pale in complexion. Goodbye vacation tan, because you're not affected by the rays of the sun anymore. On Earth, organisms that live in low light conditions, like those that are nocturnal, often have very large eyes. So would humans evolve to have larger eyes if we're living in relatively low light conditions underground? These mole people, if you will, would be pale and huge eyes. Maybe even their other senses would adapt to this dark environment. It could also really harden the colonists and create an environment where you must literally struggle to survive a very competitive environment. This competitive environment would push natural selection into overdrive. The human colonists of Proxima b could soon evolve into a new species, the mole-like Nova sapiens. But meanwhile on Earth, the humans who stayed behind would be going through an evolution of their own. Studies have already shown that we're seeing changes in our jaw structure, for example. They're getting smaller. We're eating more processed food. We're not crunching down on grains or breaking open bones and eating marrow. We're eating Snickers bars. Another change we're seeing in our own human physiology is our heads are getting smaller. Buy a hat lately? You might not need an XL anymore. It's because our brains are becoming more efficient. The Earthlings of the future will use their highly efficient brains to interact with ever more sophisticated technologies. As we move forward and we become a more technologically advanced society, the traits that allow us to interface with that technology will be the ones that are highly prized. Whereas traits that allow us to, say, be really good at lifting rocks or hunting for things will diminish.